Hey everyone, Nathan from Elegant Themes here. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create and use Extra's category layouts. Category layouts are something unique to Extra. The purpose of them is to create unique page layouts specifically for your blog posts. To get to the part of the theme where you can create and manage them, navigate in your WordPress admin to Extra Category Builder. Here you'll see a sort of archive of your existing category layouts in a format that anyone familiar with WordPress posts or pages will recognize immediately. You can create as many layouts as you want. You can create a homepage layout, a layout for each category, subcategory, and even a layout that is designated as your default layout, which will style any category not assigned something specifically. So let's open one up that I've already created so that you can see how all this is supposed to work. So to anyone who has used the Divi Builder, this is going to look very familiar because it is the Divi Builder. So the big difference here though, uh, between this version of the Builder and the Builder that you'll find on posts or pages is the modules that you have to work with. The Category Builder uses the following modules, ads, blog feed masonry, blog feed standard, code, feature post sliders, image, posts, post carousel, tab post, and text. So I've created separate videos for each of these modules. So instead of going into detail on each one's settings in this video, I'll focus instead on how you can use them to create layouts and then assign those layouts to different categories or your home page. First though, let's take a quick general tour of the category layout builder slash editor page. Uh, up here at the top, obviously we have our title. And then on the right hand side, we have our meta boxes. So aside from the builder here in the middle, the most important thing on this page are these meta boxes. This is where you select your categories, your layout usage, and your extra settings, as well as your publishing settings. So here within the categories meta box, you can select one or more categories that you'd like, whatever layout it is you're building to be assigned to. Or down here uh, under layout usage, you can choose to have your layout uh, assigned to your home page or as your default layout. If you select default layout, what's going to happen is every uh, category that doesn't have a builder page assigned to it or a layout assigned to it rather, it's going to use the one that you've assigned the default layout to. And finally down here in extra settings, we can choose to have um, a sidebar located on the right, left, or no sidebar. And we can also choose which widgetized uh, section in the widget area to populate that with content. Before moving on to the builder, I just want to make a quick note on assigning your home layout um, and actually getting it to appear. So the first step I've already shown you, you check this box right here. But to display this on your home page, you'll need to go to one of two places and configure a setting there too. So you can go to settings, reading, and you're going to want to under reading settings, front page displays, you're going to want to make sure an extra theme layout is selected and then you have the option to select a layout there. So I've built homepage magazine layout one and in reading settings I've selected an extra theme layout and homepage magazine layout one. You can also go to appearance customize and down here the menu static front page select an extra category layout. Okay, now let's dive into an explanation of the builder and create some layouts. So up here at the top, we have three tabs, uh, three buttons rather, that you can click on. So save to library. What that'll do is whatever layout you've built here below, you can save it and that will save it to the layout library. You can choose to load from library here, which will load a predefined layout, uh, either one that you've saved already or one that comes with it. So we have a uh, homepage basic, which comes as a, uh, uh, a layout pre-built by us. And you can also add from library. So I have a version of my layout that is without, uh, that with ads, and I could load that with just a click of a button. Then I can also clear layout, and that will just clear everything down here. Now over here to the right-hand side, we have uh, undo, redo, and a history of our actions that we've taken on the page. Uh, from the time that we opened it up most recently and we can go back as far as we want to undo, redo, or go back to a specific action. As I showed you before, the category builder uh, 
uses a different set of modules than your standard post or page builder. Um, and I've used those modules to create a magazine layout for my homepage. At the top, we have some tracking code, and then I have an ad, I have a homepage slider, a few post modules, um, another ad, a post carousel, three more ad, or sorry, three more post um, modules here, a tab post module, a code module, which actually displays a Facebook like box on the front end, more tab posts, and an image. So let's take a look at what I've actually built on the front end. Okay, so here you can see uh, ad at the top, featured post slider, the two post modules, another ad, uh, post carousel, post modules here again, tab posts, my code uh, module, which is the Facebook like box, and of course, more tab posts here at the very bottom, and an image post, just as a quick watermark to add a little extra branding to the bottom. So that's what it looks like on the front end. And as you can see, it's very editorial. It looks very much like maybe a fashion blog or an entertainment blog. And I've been able to organize it um, by category using the settings within each module. So just to give you a quick peek at what that looks like, and I, just so you know, I've actually created videos for each of these modules. So if you want to go in and look at how each module is configured, exactly you can do that um, in those videos but very briefly I'll just show you what I've done uh, to create the page I have by popping in the settings of these really quick and um, and giving you a, a quick tour of my settings so in the ad um, I added one ad here I just used a predefined image for the homepage slider I chose all categories four posts and I chose not to have it autoplay so that people would actually have to tap through. And that's mainly just because I wanted to keep a single feature image up at the top for consistency sake during the tutorials. Um, if I have this as a live site, I would probably um, put it on autoplay. And then we have a couple posts modules here. And what I did with all my post modules was I assigned each post module a single category. So in this case stories, and I wanted to have, um, each category or each of my main categories represented on the front end of my or on my homepage rather and so each of my post modules is assigned a single category and so when each category is added an extra it gets its own color uh, you get a really cool striking uh, thing happening on the front end which is each post module has its own kind of color theme depending on what uh, category you've assigned it Okay, moving down. Uh, now we have the post carousel. Again, I chose all. And the post limit on this one, I chose to go very high because I wanted people to be able to click these buttons, these side buttons to slide the carousel along a few times before they got back around to the uh, original set. And I have more post modules here. Again, each one assigned a single category. I have tab posts here. So the tab post is interesting because um, depending on the width of the row that it's in, it'll appear differently on the front end. So if it's uh, sharing that row with another element, instead of being truly tabbed like this one, you're going to see these little arrows and you, the user can click between tabs as opposed to these where you still have to click, but um, they're all visible. Okay, so now that we've created a home page layout, let's create a default layout and a category layout. Uh, this will also give me a chance to show you the only two modules not present on my magazine uh, layout, which is blog feed standard and blog feed masonry. So let's begin with the default layout. A default layout is the layout design that will be applied to any category or subcategory on your blog that does not have another layout specifically assigned to it. In my case, I decided to keep things really simple and just use a single blog feed standard module for this layout. As you can see, I have selected in under layout usage over here in the sidebar, the uses default layout. 
And in order to get this to work properly, there's one other really important setting that I need to configure, and that's inside the blog feed module itself. So when I open it up, the very first thing you see that I have selected is current category. So current category is a really important um, feature in Extra. What it allows you to do is apply any module to multiple categories and have only that category appear on the front end when someone clicks on it. So let's say I want current category to be applied to five or six of these categories below it. I don't want to select all five or six of these because on the front end, when someone clicks on any one of these, all of them will appear. Because what this does is this says, I want to see books, case studies, character development, comic books, and design um, anytime I'm in this module. So that's not what we want to do. What we instead want to do is click current category and in our categories over here, assign multiple categories to this layout. And what current category allows us to do is anytime someone clicks on any one of the, um, the categories on the front end that is uh, selected in our categories meta box, only the posts in that category will appear. It's really important. So once I have this setting configured and all my other preferences uh, configured in um, the blog feed standard module, I just click save and exit and publish, or in my case, update. And what I can see on the front end here is any category that does not have a layout already assigned to it will automatically feature my default layout. So this is just an unassigned category that now displays a standard blog feed. Okay, so the other thing I want to show you before um, we finish this tutorial is what the masonry blog feed looks like. So if we go down here uh, to interviews, which is a category that I've assigned the blog feed masonry to, we can see that it just creates a really nice clean masonry look. And on the back end, I'll go back to extra category builder. And I have the interviews here. I can open that up with edit. And just like the standard blog feed uh, module layout, it's literally just one, one section, one row, one module, the blog feed masonry. Uh, over here in categories, you'll notice that I've selected interviews. And then when we open this up, I can either select current category because with only one selected here and current category, it'll always show interviews. Or since it is just one, I can only select interviews and I'll get the same thing. So uh, either way, that works. And just to show you again on the front end, if I refresh that after changing that from current category to just interviews, you'll see that it still displays the same posts. Okay, well that's all for this video. This has been a tutorial about how to create and use extras category layouts. If you have any questions about what we've gone over in this video, feel free to leave us a comment and we'll make sure you get a response. If you're interested in learning more about extra or seeing what else it's capable of, you can click the view demo button. If you're interested in seeing more extra tutorials, click the subscribe button and never miss a great tip. Thanks for watching.